Please welcome Rick Howe, Speed Invest. Hello, everyone. My name is Rick Howe. I'm a partner at Speed Invest. As you know, quantum computing is widely regarded as the next big step forward in computing, allow for certain complex problems to be solved that are not feasible with standard computers. This has the potential to transform what's possible in the fields like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and drug development. To connect different quantum computers and have them exchange information, you need a quantum internet. Such a network will allow you to combine different quantum technologies, increase the combined computation power of the computers, and bridge large distance using quantum communication channels. The challenge, however, is finding a way for quantum computers to be able to start talking to each other. QFOX was started by three research scientists at TU Delft is to exactly tackle this problem. They developed the quantum modem, a breakthrough device that allow quantum computers to, to talk to one another by unlocking the potential of the quantum internet. Now I will leave Simon, Rob and Fred to give you a more introduction of QFOX. Thank you. Breaking the wall of scalable quantum computing. Simon Gröblacher, QFOX. Many of you have heard of quantum computing. Some of you might have even pitched ideas of how to build a useful quantum computer. However, the fact is, there's no quantum computer to date doing any computation faster than a classical computer. Why is it? Why is it so hard to build a useful quantum computer? Well, the main challenge is scaling, building a big enough machine that can actually tackle some of the really challenging problems that we can't do with classical computation. At QFOX, we have the idea how to solve this. We are building what we call a quantum modem that will allow quantum computers to scale. In classical computing, parallelization is one of the most useful concepts. So essentially, all of your cell phones, your laptops, they all have multi-core processors. At the same time, if we take this to an extreme, if we connect millions of CPUs together, we can really tackle some of the most challenging problems using supercomputers. For quantum computation, we will need something similar. We will need to connect small-scale, high-quality quantum computers into a smaller network so they can really parallel process and tackle some of the challenges that, that we face, that we want to solve with quantum computers. And at QFOX, this is exactly what we built. We built a system that will connect these quantum computers together. This is why we call it a, a quantum model. To give you a little bit more detail on how this works, so essentially what we do is inside the quantum computer, so this is, these are two quantum computers, inside the quantum computer, we convert the quantum information into an optical signal that we can then route out in a standard optical fiber so we can transmit it at room temperature and in principle over large distances. And this will then allow to connect many of these computers together into a bigger system that will allow for, in principle, universal quantum computation. We can take this even a step further. Um, we can not only connect the same kind of quantum computers together, but we can take different companies, different hardware, different implementations to connect into a quantum network. They all operate then at the same network frequency that we provide, and we essentially therefore build kind of the backbone of a quantum internet. In order to do this, we've attracted some of the most talented people that cover the fabrication, the microwave engineering, and the quantum optics that we need for building the system. We're now 15 people, and we also have an amazing advisory board. For example, um, recent Nobel laureate Alain Space on our advisory board, um, Ash Fontana, and our two investors, Christoph Jurczak and Rick Howe. Together with this team, we're getting ready to build our first product. We're doing this in a two-staged approach. So first of all, we build an optical qubit um, readout system that will allow us to circumvent some of the main challenges of building a quantum computer today. This is simply heat load and, and space requirements inside the quantum computer. So we'll be able to build a machine beyond 1,000 qubits, essentially, an individual machine. And then once we can convert quantum states, we will then be able to connect the quantum computers together and build a scalable platform that will allow for universal quantum processing. Now, I would really love to tell you more about the technology, how, we're, how our technology is amazing, and how we have super low noise, high bandwidth, and so on. But in the view of time, I'm unfortunately not able to do this. So I will rather tell you about 
the people we're talking to, the potential clients and customers that we're working with. So mostly currently in the superconducting quantum computing space, but also already talking to people that build different hardware, for example, ion-based quantum computers or, or neutral atoms like IonQ, Pascal, and other companies in the quantum internet alliance. So these are really the target customers for our systems. Now, so far we've been fortunate and we've been relatively successful with attracting funding. We're currently raising a, a Series A round to really bring our products to market. So this is the time that we want to double down and, and build a system that we can start selling. And as you all know, the internet itself wasn't built in a day, and neither will the quantum internet. But with QFOX's technology, we'll be able to scale systems, connect them together, and really build a quantum network that will allow for universal quantum computing and um, enabling the quantum internet. I'm way too fast. Thanks for your attention. I'm open for questions. <laughs> That was fast. Yeah. <laughs> that was a Should quantum... have gone into more details. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Quantum speed. Well, you, wanted to, you, you, you said you didn't have the time to go into details, but I'm sure the questions will dig into Great. these details, right? <laughs> Who would like to take the first question here? Jury, or do we have somebody else in the, in the room? Yes, Stefan, please. The microphone is coming. Thanks to you. Oh, no, Stefan was first. No? Oh, OK. Well, please, go on. <laughs> so a really amazing idea. Um, because quantum computers yet aren't yet mainstream, how are you going to sync the tech with the requirements of uh, what's emerging? Because there's still some debate about what a com quantum computer is going to be in the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's different implementations, different hardware that we're not clear what is going to succeed, right? Um, we are trying to be agnostic to any type of hardware. Anything will need to be connected to a network and be developing technology that will allow to interface with all of them. Okay, then Stefan now. And did I get it right in your presentation that you need to build a quantum computer at 1,000 qubits first before you can prove the modem, or is it just completely related another endeavor of yours? No, this is the, in principle, it's irrelevant how big the computer is. We can connect any type of computer together, say 20 qubits or 1,000 qubits. It shouldn't matter. Um, it's more about the first product, the first stage of a product will already enable computers to scale to 1,000 qubits and beyond, so a single computer. That's just interesting to, to not have a million, so you'd rather have like a thousand computers with a thousand qubits than a million with one qubit, right? So this is, this is what we're trying to enable first. But we can already, in principle, connect to smaller scale computers already now and connect them together. Okay, thank you. Next question. No one in the room here, please, uh, on the third row. Thank you very much. Maybe one more question about the technology. There's existing yeah. quantum networks, right, in the U.S., 20, 30, 40, 50 miles. You know, there's one in Absolutely. China, you know, up on the... What, yeah. what, is it, what, what is the technology advantage or the, 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 the performance advantage that this provides as compared to the existing ones? So, so the quantum networks you're talking about is mostly for quantum communication. So what we want to do is we want to bring quantum computation on a network. And, and that's the main difference. And these, eventually, they have been developing really in parallel so far but you want to combine them eventually. So quantum communication, quantum networks at the moment are really purely for quantum key distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question by Geneviève here in the first row, thank you. Very interesting, because it's <laughs> bi-directional as well. Absolutely. The data can go in both directions. Now, what's your business model? Because I can imagine that companies such as IBM would be interested in maybe buying it. Is that your out strategy, or do you want to continue on? So, really interesting question. I, I think we'll see what, what happens. I think our main focus would be to be an independent company and sell the modem as a service or as a, as a hardware system to, to clients. So we don't want to focus only on a single company because there will be multiple, I think, winners of the quantum computing space. And so we really want to be able to service them all. Okay, last question by Lamin, I think. Yeah, uh, m maybe a question um, uh, concerning uh, the impact of having a modem, because everyone is struggling just with one quantum computer. Mm -hmm. So how important is, is it to have a modem for the success of the whole technology? What's the impact? I think, so I think the impact is going to be really massive. So it's, you can't build a single system that will be able to do universal quantum computing. This is just like people are struggling with 100 qubits or 200 qubits at the moment. You need like a million to really have a universal quantum computing. 
So it's really difficult to build a single machine that can, that can house them all, that can really do the computation, so you will need some sort of like modular approach. If you look at all the roadmaps, for example, of IBM, they, they already see this, they're already saying, like, we definitely need a modular way to, to build a quantum computer. Okay, thank you very much. Perfectly in time to Thank finish you. this uh, second session.